<laughs> Hi, my name is Ronnie Griffin. I'm here with Gopal. He's a structural engineer. Um, I'm be asking him a few questions. Okay. Gopal, what, uh, what are the educational requirements to become a structural engineer? Um, you, you've got to do your bachelor's in engineering, uh, I guess. Um, usually the way it is, is uh, you, get, you do your four years of engineering major in civil engineering and um, that's kind of the basic requirements and uh, if you want to specialize uh, then you do your masters in structural engineering that's kind of a specialization okay so what you did was you got a bachelor's in civil science and then you got a master's, master's in, in structural, structural engineering but it need not be that's not mandatory it's like most of the people um, what they do is they do the bachelor uh, they do the bachelor's and mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, in civil engineering, but they enter the structural streamline and um, they do more work in structural and okay, so the course they have, they have to So the master's isn't very nece isn't necessary, but correct. Okay. Yeah. How many years of college does that take for the bachelor's? Four years of uh, bachelor's. Um, the master's usually two, two and a half in some cases. Yeah, two additional. Yeah, two additional. Okay. What are the main uh, main class requirements? Um, you've got to do a basic, uh, I mean, uh, math courses. Uh, that's that's like for all the engineering disciplines, I guess. But yeah. uh, for structural, uh, 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 you you got to do your uh, applied mechanics. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, your mechanics of solids. Um, your structural analysis is one mm -hmm. course. Nowadays, um, uh, I think uh, people take electives in uh, AutoCAD and... Uh, uh, but lots of physics and lots of... A lot of physics and math, yeah. Okay. What degree is required to become a PE? <clears throat> um, there is no degree requirement for a PE, uh, like special degree requirement for mm -hmm. a PE, I would say. If you are a structural engineer with a bachelor's, uh, that's a minimum. Then you can. And uh, then uh, it depends on uh, the amount of uh, years that you practice as a structural engineer. Um, the basic one is like five years for uh, 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 with a bachelor's degree, and it's three years with a master's degree. Now, is that sort of like an apprenticeship? Do you have to practice right. under another yeah. engineer? Yeah, it's considered that you are working in a structural firm or okay. or like a firm which does uh, some kind of structural engineering and uh, okay. you work under a uh, you work under a professional engineer. Okay. Um, what is the role of communication in structural engineering? Oh, uh, it plays a vital role. Uh, just like any other engineering discipline, or um, it, it plays a significant role. Uh, the the immediate thing I can think of is uh, um, once you translate um, all the requirements in, in, in plans or uh, in, in the form of the construction documents, uh, um, there is a major necessity of uh, communication between the structural engineer and mm -hmm. the construction engineer over there in the site. And uh, there is a con communication requirement of the construction engineer to the construction workers who, who actually put things in place. Um, so you, any any kind of misinterpretation between a structural and the construction, uh, and uh, thereon it, it can be disastrous, and uh, it's very vital that uh, uh, things are are, are, are understood, yeah. are understood and communicated in the exact way. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, what types of communication do you use more often than nowadays? Um, a lot of emailing, uh, mm -hmm. uh, especially um, with. with with nowadays things happening fast and there is a lot of requirements for the for things to be done really fast and the time constraints and the rapid projects and the other other stuff going on um, uh, things are designed um, the construction documents are made and sent on to the site then and there and um, any any changes in the construction documents which mm -hmm. which happens in the middle in the in the course of the project uh, are communicated to the uh, to the construction engineer or superintendent over there through email. You, you kind of scan the documents and attach it to email. So emails the main main mm -hmm. thing. Okay. And uh, yeah, also telephones when it, when it's like more immediate.
Okay, what's one of the major projects you handle? Um, the, the latest project which I handled um, was, uh, uh, was a MAT foundation. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's basically a foundation for a huge building. It's a multi-story kind of building mm -hmm. containing big racks where they oh, store okay. products. And uh, it's called uh, auto palletizer, which means mm -hmm. uh, uh, it doesn't require uh, uh, humans. It's it's basically robotized and uh, oh wow for picking up all so the products. So it's all automated. Yeah, it's all automated. And uh, these are tall. They have a lot of stacks of products. And um, I was involved in that building, in in the in the side building and <coughs> and, and the mat supporting these racks. Okay. Um, designing those. Out of all the projects you've done, what made you think of that one? Just the magnitude of it? Uh, how tall it is? That, that's, <coughs> uh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, first of all, it was a little challenging because like the, the soil over which the mat is coming, the, mm -hmm. the mat foundation is laying upon was, was not an easy soil to work with. It, it was not um, oh, okay. uh, and then um, the amount of load that that we are seeing, and it's a tall building, and then um, there's a lot of complications involved in that, uh, and and there there aren't enough uh, uh, examples or typical foundations like this, which which would give you some no, idea no, about yeah. what, how to do. So this first of its case, not I wouldn't say first, but it's a it's a unique one, and. Um, we okay. need to make sure, you know, like we do the correct thing and implement that properly. Okay. Mm -hmm. How is structural engineering different from an architect or other forms of <coughs> of engineering? Uh, if if you see a cons if you if you see a construction um, office or, or if you, if you see some 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 firm which is involved in construction. Mm -hmm. um, you will have an architect, you will have a structural engineer, structural designer, and then um, for implementing all this, you will have a construction engineer. So there are three main people, if you can consider, um, those are architects, uh, structural engineer, and the construction engineer. Uh, what I will do now is like uh, tell each of their uh, functionalities. Okay. Architect, what he does is he contacts the owner, and um, uh, the owner approaches him and tells him, like, this is what I want. Uh, and uh, he puts things on a paper, and uh, he kinds of uh, it's like an image. What owner ha has it? Draws a pretty picture. Yeah, he, he, he draw. He always draws a pretty picture. Gets good mm -hmm. names from yeah. the owners, <laughs> and it's a structural engineer who gets always the bad names because he's the one who tells. Oh, is it? Th is this possible? Will it stand? Is it stable? Mm -hmm. And all kinds of things. Um, architects have to take care of few few regulations like. Mm -hmm. uh, the fire protection is one. Uh, the exits uh, for the fire protection, all those things, and there are some codal requirements for the architects. Uh, uh, for example, if the building is going to contain so many occupants, uh, you need to take care of a few things uh, mm -hmm. in the architectural point of view. It's according to the building code. Florida has one uh, building code. Uh, most of the states have has Their own one. building code. Yeah, and there is a main body building code, which is the international building code. You got to stick to that. Um, the structural engineer has his own structural design part in the building code which he has to stick to. And um, differentiating architect and structural engineer, what structural engineer does is he takes it from the architect mm -hmm. and then he has to design the structural components which is going to hold the building and the roof mm -hmm. and things together, um, mm -hmm. make sure it, it, it is stable. Make sure it all stands where it don't fall down. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that and, makes sense. And then the construction engineer puts all things into shape and put it together, he, he has the help of the construction workers and, and people to, to implement all those. So, okay, all so the basically three are important. architects basically draw pretty pictures for the, mm -hmm. for okay. the owners and the structural engineer makes it all structurally sound to where it will stand okay. and the construction engineer makes sure it's built correctly. Exactly. Okay. Uh, what type of groundwork do you have to do before you can even start to engineer a building? Um, okay, one major thing is like uh, once you know where it's going to where it's going to be uh, located, mm -hmm. um, you need to gather information about that area, like what kind of uh, um, geographical conditions that area has, and such as such as soil. Uh, the soil is a variant, and uh, it can be a snow 
snow country uh, mm -hmm. it can be like a windy area like florida mm -hmm. where wind play, plays a major part in the design aspect of the conditions if it is uh, like the california area it's going to be seismic uh, it's an earthquake it's prone mm -hmm. so um, these would affect uh, in choosing what kind of uh, building system you're going to choose basically uh, and then after that's decided after that uh, after that is decided you'll go about and choose your building system accordingly and um, uh, you will have the different uh, numbers in the sense of like what's the wind speed in this area what's the seismic zone it is mm -hmm. or what is the snow load that is coming and um, uh, the other groundwork is what is the use for use of the building uh, what kind of a building is, is it oh, is it okay, like a factory yeah. is it like a residential building is it like an office building and different things have different loads uh, basically you have a, a load assignment that you see in the code like you you got to uh, you got to follow the code for what kind of load you pick mm -hmm. be be the uh, live load what you call and uh, the dead load which is actually the load of all the things that you build it with uh, you all need to estimate steel that. and correct okay if it's a concrete roof what it is and those kind of things so okay. that's a minimum groundwork that you do before uh, starting to build a building okay what type of uh do you have any special techniques or programs that you use to help design structural nowadays uh, nowadays there is a lot of uh, dependency on or what i would say all these new structural tools in in, uh, in terms of uh, the software that we use uh, mm -hmm. help us a lot in reducing the amount of time in calculating or uh, coming up with the design and the analysis mm -hmm. um, uh, so it's not all done by hand anymore it's correct uh, those some parts uh, we do it by hand uh, uh, we do a basic checking and stuff so uh, because you cannot blindly rely on any software, I guess. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Because that's that's basically what yeah, yeah what you give in it gives out. So you mm -hmm. got to you got to go by the side and check like okay just to make sure. Yeah, you still have to give it the loads to get an output. I got gotcha. you. Yeah right. So, but there are different forms of analysis and design. Uh, one thing I can think of immediately is a finite element analysis. Mm -hmm. um, or well, that's one type of analysis and. Uh, uh, depending on the building system that you use, you perform different kinds of analysis. There's moment area analysis, there's a lot of different kinds, but again, uh, what you do is like you choose your building system, which can be a brace system, which can be a moment system, those kind of thing, and then uh, you decide upon like what, what kind of analysis um, you've got to do in order to do, in order to perform the correct one. Oh, okay. Um. Can you tell me the difference between two different types of structures you've done? Maybe, say, a food distribution facility versus a food process facility? Um, yeah, we, we basically do both uh, in, our, uh, in our design firm or design build firm. Uh, I wouldn't say there is, a, uh, there is a big difference in terms of uh, the type of analysis we perform in both, mm -hmm. uh, to be frank. Uh, uh, because the type of analysis, as I said, depends on the type of the system, and the type of the system depends on the geographic area, um, mm -hmm. uh, geographic location of, of that particular uh, building. So, but uh, what, how is it used? Uh, uh, how is the distribution facility being used, and how it's a, how is the process facility being used? That determines uh, the load that you put in uh, both Into these buildings. Okay. But uh, the major part is uh, um, what are the structural components that you use? Uh, that that is very important. Um, that's one major role of structural engineer. He needs to choose and pick his uh, structural material or components uh, for making that building. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he has to make the building stable and uh, sometimes nowadays even environmental friendly. And he has mm -hmm. a lot of roles. Uh, in making up that building. And it's up to him to determine what he needs to make that building work. Exactly. And uh, um, you can still make it work uh, with, uh, with probably the same uh, structural components or structural materials used, but uh, the food processing facility demands some uh, basic uh, hygiene regulations that you got to uh, oh, follow yeah. Yeah. Uh, in a process area. Say you, you, both, you have a meat processing area and uh, that particular room, uh, you got to make sure that uh, 
you know, um, the columns and the beams that you choose uh, are not going to going to accumulate any dust, or dust or dirt or uh, a, uh, anything that would um, grow bacteria and other stuffs, other kind of stuff. So there's a lot of regulation in those things. And you are, you normally use a box type structural members mm -hmm. rather than the open section ones, uh, so that the so dust don't collect. And, uh, and the design is also made in such a way that you take care of all these things and, put, and do your design. Oh wow, sounds like a lot. Yeah. Okay, well, um, thanks for uh, coming in and sitting down and doing this with me. Thank you. I appreciate it. All thanks. Right.